guess any promoted team will look back on nights where they probably haven't played their best, but the important thing is to get the result. Would you agree? That's probably from what you've seen from your team tonight. Definitely, and we showed today a winning mentality. It was, it was a difficult game. It's, it's a difficult game anyway when you have to deliver in this toughest league in the work world and this relentless uh, um, league all three days, and then today a difficult away game on a difficult pitch against a side who went into this game with a clean sheet win, also a bit, bit flying, and um, yeah, they're fighting desperately also to, to win some points against, uh, against relegation. And, I took Karanka's side are always well organized, well structured, so difficult to, to beat them and um, then to, to win the game really 3-1 and uh, also in this manner after some problems in the, uh, in the first half and then it was a fantastic second half is more or less priceless and pretty pretty valuable three points and pretty light than the mood is good in person. I'm sure it is, yeah, but talking of mood, would it be fair to say you were a little bit frustrated yourself? We could hear you, obviously it's an empty stadium, that first half you wasn't happy with what you saw from your guys, safe to say you maybe got some points across at half time? Yes, yeah, sometimes uh, I'm perhaps a bit over strict uh, with, uh, with them, if I'm, if I'm honest, we can also reduce it and say, listen, we have created perhaps more than any other side here in a difficult away game against Birmingham because this side is always that compact. We scored a fantastic goal, we had a uh, penalty that we sadly missed, we had uh, Kenny McLean in the one against one situation on the goalkeeper, you could speak about that this was uh, more or less more than you, than you actually get against the side. And, the goal we conceded was more or less a half own goal anyhow, so it was unnecessary to be there just with a draw at, uh, at half time and you could argue yeah, it was, uh, was a bit unlucky, but if I'm honest I was not really 100% happy with our mindset in the, uh, in the first half, so um, we, we were not poor or whatever, but, but I got the feeling so um, we were not willing to do the basics, to do the dirty stuff against the ball. I was quite happy with our game with the ball, but against the ball I think we were too much, too much concentrated. Okay, I rest a little bit. I save some energy for the for the game with the ball. Um, not willing, really, also to accept against against a good side. Sometimes you have to defend. And first half, it, it felt, yeah, that that forty crosses came came into our box. Although we were never an underload uh, on the wings, but we lost in the one against one, the two against two, the three against three situations. Yeah, we're also a bit like not willing to throw our body really in, uh, into the duels, also in the pressing, we have always pressure on the ball. We were shifting, but not really with, with intensity. And it was still unlucky that we were not in lead at, uh, at half time. Uh, but um, I told them at half time, listen, for me, it's, and I know it's difficult when you have to live all three days, or always that the fire has to burn all three days. But I told them at half time, for me, it's not a pot if we win the game, or if we lose the game, or if we draw the game. What I want to see in, this, uh, in the second half. It's, it's a different mindset, yeah, that we go for this game, yeah, that we also work as a team with fighting spirit, with, with togetherness, and not just being anyhow a bit angry on the pitch, a bit disappointed, a bit mooning about the teammate and the bad pass or something like this. I wanted uh, some steam, some, some spirit, and, uh, some togetherness. And I have to say, what the let's deliver then in the second half was, was outstanding because yeah, I got the feeling we were all over them, controlled all the counters. They were still dangerous. Eh? They have quality players, but we controlled all the counters, played more or less just in their half, scored two fantastic goals, could have scored perhaps even uh, even a few more. But also, especially to, to have this mentality also, it's a third game for us in six days and a difficult first half. And then uh, to find the next gear within the game, not in the beginning, but within the game, you know, although you could be could argue oh, I was a bit unlucky with missing the penalty, half own goal and you know, this is winning mentality, and for that, pretty pretty proud with this uh, with this game. Pretty proud with the second half. Pretty proud uh, with this uh, result, and for that, I just have compliments uh, for the lads here because you can't be 46 games from the first to the last second always perfect. But when there is a difficult time, then you have to show character and, and real steel and real fighting spirit. That's what we showed in the second half, and for that, it's more or less a price that's been fast. You said uh, after the weekend, look, it's not about league status at this stage, it's about points. That's 67 now from 32 games. 10 clear, I know there's teams playing tomorrow night. It's looking very, very strong position, your team are in there. Yes, but again, so I'm, I'm not addicted to the table. The table is, is not um, important for me. For I know 67 points at this stage of the season is fantastic and, and outstanding, but we have to keep going. For me, this win just means we are three points closer to achieve what we want to achieve in the end. If we right now stop winning points, it would be even even enough to make it into the playoffs. So that's definitely for sure. So our our task is right now, and this is what we want to, to achieve as quick as possible, 80 points. Yeah, with 80 points, you are safe in the playoffs, perhaps even a few less are 
uh, enough to stay there, but with 80 points, you're definitely definitely safe, and this is what we what we want want to achieve, and, and this is then what we that we have achieved also our targets, uh, what we spoke uh, spoke about uh, before the season starts, and if we have then achieved 80 points, and there are still a few games to go there, then uh, we can speak about everything else, and then we want to go for more. But this league it's so difficult to to win points. You have to fight. This game is another proof you have to fight. For each and every point, and in order to make it to up to 80, we need 30 more. So, still a proper amount of games, and we have good chances to achieve this. And I'm also confident that we will achieve this. But for that, we have to keep going and have to work for on. And uh, like I mentioned, so I'm not too carried away, not too over the moon. I'm just unbelievably happy with the status quo and want to keep going. It's final one from me. You said at the weekend, Timo, you feel he's getting back to his best. Maybe if he continues in this vein, he could be unplayable. Okay, he's missed the penalty, but this first goal and the second goal. That's what he's all about, so sharp. I think he was unplayable during the whole game. They had problems to control his movements and, and he created, created a lot. And Timo, Timo is, for me, the best player and the best striker in this, uh, in this, uh, in this league. First of all, because he suits to our style. Yeah, there are different, different types, but also what he does for the team. Uh, when I think about his selfless assist in the last game, about his workload in terms of pressing, in terms of winning, winning balls back, but also how he delivers. Yeah, he's always there with a crucial goal with the opener with one null in the last four games, four times with consistency he scores the first goal. He's not the guy who scores in the easy 7-1 with the back heel or whatever. He is there when it counts uh, today again. So with the first goal after the equalizer and then the 2-1, he's always there when it's uh, when it's really necessary. And this makes him that unique in this uh, in this league and this level and, and we all should value a lot um, that we that we have him under contract. He's a fantastic fantastic character, fantastic football player and yeah, hopefully he can go on further on like this and he stays also healthy and, and um, don't get any um, any problems in, uh, with his body or with illnesses or whatever. You never know during this strange times with the, with the pandemic. You always have to be careful, but at the moment it looks unbelievably good. Well, Thanks, Danny. Thank yeah, Danny, did it surprise you how uh, aggressive Birmingham were in the first half? No, no, because I know that they, they have this quality and they have the quality also to press. They have top players up front and I think about the options also to bring into the game like Jutkiewicz to start with home there are their top players they have wing options with Sanchez with, with Bela with Leko so they have players in order to, to play uh, quite quite offense many uh, technical players also also up front it was still not easy to, to create against them because Eidos set them always um, up unbelievable well structured and it's difficult to uh, to beat them and for that I was quite pleased how much we created today in this, uh, this away game um, but I also know that uh, when, when you allow this, uh, this players and, and you want know, to win duels over the wing, then crosses come in and, and they would go for it. Yeah? Because it's a, it's a good side and I'm pretty sure that in the end they will uh, definitely finish um, above the line and will finish more or less in mid-table. I'm 100% sure about, uh, about this and for that um, we're not surprised. They went perhaps even a bit more for it in comparison to the home game. But was also a bit due to we were in lead anyhow. They had to risk a little bit more for that. I spoke about before the game. It's important to score the first goal to open the game a little bit, and that's what we did. And uh, yeah, Birmingham is a good side, no doubt about this. You, you said a lot about Pookie already, but I, I mean, he's got six goals in his last four games. Is there, you know, he's on fire at the moment. Clearly, is there any kind of goal target that you'd like to see him hit at all? No, because he has proved this uh, already. He was two years ago the best uh, striker in this league, the best player in this league. Got the award for the best player, got the award for the most goals. So he has proved this. So he doesn't have to do this uh, again. It's 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 not important at all. But what he has proven two years ago that he can be the key man, the key striker to bring your your team over the line. This is all that matters in the second uh, season. It's not about individual statistics. He was also out for a few games because of illnesses, because of. Uh, injuries, he had no pre-season anyhow, I think uh, hardly any striker has played more games in Western Europe in the last two two years, so it's not about uh, when I can give him a rest also for the on, I will do this, uh, because he's not anyhow after any individual awards, he has won them all, so for him his target is more like to bring us as a team over the line to where we want to be in the end, and this is more like his crossbar and, and he's working on to achieving this, that's the only target I set him and uh, we set us and uh, yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy that he's that selfless and such a team player. He's a great great character. What are you saying is, you, know, you can give, you want to give him a rest, but he looks so important. How, how possible is that or likely? Two minutes today was uh, was, uh, <laughs> was possible, and also due to um, yeah was also the last goal that we scored was also 
expression on how important the whole t the whole team is here because uh, they brought then um, tall, tall players into the game with, with Roberts, with Jutkiewicz and in this last moment there was a set piece to defend and yeah we then brought our uh, our uh, smaller players off with only and this although he had a fantastic impact and uh, he was was important for us but and Emil also Emil Boudia. Uh, but we got the feeling, okay, we have to defend this one situation, a set piece. Mm -hmm. It's important then to have our best headers on the pitch. That's the reason why we brought John Hugel and, and Jacob Lungi Sirfsen on. And then the uh, second phase, John Hugel defended the set piece, Lucas Rupp, another important substitution with a great 80 yard, mm -hmm. yard uh, drive dribble with the ball. And then he was that selfless to play the ball over uh, to, uh, to uh, Oliver Skip. Yeah? Lucas Rupp could have been. A bit selfish to think. Okay, right now I'm after the substitution. I'm in the spotlight. Score the goal. No, he was just thinking about about the team, and this is what we have to have to show. So team character, team spirit, and I'm quite light with this. And uh, that's the only thing that matters. And no doubts about the, the penalty at all uh, in terms of winning the penalty. You know, the, the decision to award you. I haven't, haven't watched it, uh, watch it back. Um, I think it, it looked like um, okay. uh, Todd, Todd Kent will touch the ball and, and the ball goes into the other direction. There was then probably a clear penalty. Uh, but I haven't watched it back, so uh, it doesn't matter anyway because we missed it sadly. Um, yeah, but I haven't watched it back, so I can't judge it. But it looked just from 50 yards away, it looked like a clear penalty because Todd played the ball and then mm -hmm. the goal was probably too late. Will Timu continue to take penalties for you? He has got many, many uh, penalties over the years, so for that, just after one missed penalty, um, uh, I wouldn't uh, would doubt it. But we, had, we have also other players, Mario Franch is a good penalty taker. It's, it's always like we have one or two on the uh, on the poster, and we had also a period, I think two years ago in our title season, we missed an unbelievable amount of penalty, and we switched from after each of a missed penalty, it doesn't help uh, as well, so um, then you have many players who have missed penalties, so for that, uh, I would, would even be um, absolutely um, Sure that Timo would would take the next penalty to uh, to finish, but if he doesn't feel great and he's he's experienced enough, he doesn't think just about his own goal tally. He just thinks about the team. Then we have also other players like Marvin Francic or Emil Boudia scored a penalty uh, over the years uh, as well. We have other players, so I'm not I'm not too concerned about this. Just after you, you you've played a very settled team for a while now. Are they tired at all, or are they fresh and just wanting to carry on as they have done in the last few games? It's good right now that we have five uh, five games uh, five days between the games because it's it's difficult when you have to deliver all three days. You can do this once perhaps. Uh, today it was also important, uh, yeah, because because it was more or less the same schedule also for for Birmingham. No advantage. Uh, I can remember once we had to play three games within six days against Swansea, and Swansea was resting for six days and just able to concentrate. And this one or two percent could could make the difference. But all in all, I have to say our, our fitness level is outstanding. Also, um, yeah, the recovery was was enough. We had nearly 80 hours. It's enough to recover. We had three proper sleeps. Sometimes it's difficult when you arrive pretty late after a evening game on Wednesday, uh, for example, uh, pretty late at home, and, and you're just there in the early hours of. Thursday morning and you have to play then Saturday afternoon. This is a bit tricky right now with the next game on Sunday, it's not a problem at all and, and all the players like want to play football games and, and set off training so for that mm -hmm. not, not a concern for the weekend.